Alright, next what we're going to talk about is some of the basics of the unit circle. And the unit circle is basically a graphical representation of how we can figure out different trig function values and make things a little bit easier for us. That allows us to basically find the trig function of any angle. Or not any angle, but the majority of the angles that we're going to use. So here's some of the basics. Uh, what we're going to do is we're basically going to pretend that this circle has a radius of 1 and that uh, most of our other nice little rules apply. Well, what you should know is uh, since we're talking about a coordinate system, your order pairs are x, comma, y. Nothing new. You've uh, talked about this before. So uh, we can identify some points on a unit circle, and we'll kind of talk about that here in a little bit. But with this unit circle, what you also need to know is that the order pairs are cosine of your angle, comma, the sine of your angle. So what that basically means for us is the x value of the order pair will represent the cosine, and the y value will represent the sine. So what we'll do is we'll talk a little bit, and here we go. Uh, what we're going to do is we're, uh, we're going to find some of our quadrant angles. And this is something that we haven't done before, so we'll say that, you know, this right here is 0 degrees, which is also 0 radians. If you rotate all the way around 360 degrees or 2 pi, here this will be 180. Whoops, my amplifier write the 0 for the 180, uh, which is pi. And this right here is going to be 90 degrees, which in other words is pi halves in radians. And this is 270 degrees, or 3 pi halves. Excellent. We've done this before when we talked about quadrant angles. And now we're going to basically apply our unit circle concept. Now like I said, I already talked to you about this, and we already said that we're going to pretend that the circle has a radius of 1 and that the center is the origin. So what you should know is that this point of intersection right here uh, is going to be 1, 0. This point of intersection right here is going to be 0, 1. This point of intersection right here will be negative 1, 0. And this point of intersection right here will be 0, negative 1. So it shouldn't be too bad. Hopefully we kind of understand that. Uh, what you also need to know is this, is that we've just found an infinite number of trig function values. And the reason being is any angle that terminates right here on your positive x-axis, the cosine is 1 and the sine will be 0. Therefore, the cosine of 0 degrees is 1. The sine of 0 radians is 0. The cosine of 360 degrees is 1 the sine of 360 degrees is 0. So anything that's coterminal, negative 360 would have the same sine and cosine values. And then, uh, you know, if we did 720 degrees, that would also allow us to find the uh, same cosine and sine values. Now, as we know, there's an infinite number of coterminal angles. So we've really grown our knowledge by an infinite amount. Not only do we know that, but since we know cosine and sine, we can find some other ones. So if we know that the cosine of our angle is 1, then that means that our uh, secant is going to be the reciprocal of that. So the secant of 0 degrees is also 1. The uh, cosecant of 0 radians, that one's going to be a little bit tricky because it's the reciprocal of 0. Well, the reciprocal of 0, as you well know, is 1 over 0, which is undefined. Now, with your quadrant angles, we don't necessarily create a triangle to find those. We kind of use the concept of the unit circle, having a radius of 1, to be able to help us out. So, to be able to find our nice little uh, tangent and cotangent, we have to use one of our quotient identities. So, we'll say our tangent, hopefully you remember this from the other day's lecture, is sine over cosine. So for instance, our tangent, to calculate our tangent of 0 degrees, you'll take 0 and divide it by 1, which will give you 0. If you want to come up with the sine of 360 degrees, I mean not the sine, the cotangent of 360 degrees, then you'll have the cosine over the sine, which will be undefined. So keep that in mind, and the good news about this stuff is the rules apply all the way around the circle. So for instance, the cosine of, zero, of 90 degrees is 0. The sine of pi halves is 1. To find tangent, we would do sine over cosine, which would be undefined. And then anything coterminal to 90 degrees or pi halves would also have the same trigonometric function values. 
Same thing here, if you're talking about 180 degrees or pi, the cosine for that terminal angle would be negative 1. The sine is 0. To find our tangent, you would do sine over cosine, which would end up being 0. Down here, anything coterminal to 270 degrees or 3 pi halves will have a cosine value of 0, a sine value of negative 1, and then, of course, to find your tangent, you would do sine over cosine, which would be undefined. So keep that in mind. The other thing we're going to talk about before we move on is some other basics of the unit circle. Uh, the rules that you already know about your xy coordinate plane, they also apply. So right now our quadrant angles, they don't really fall in a quadrant. They actually fall on the axis, but I'm going to teach you some rules about the quadrants. And what you know in quadrant 1, all the points in quadrant 1, both the x and the y are positive. In quadrant 2, the x is negative, the y is positive. In quadrant 3, they're both negative. And in quadrant 4, the x is positive and the y is negative. So the way that helps us is this: these rules also apply to your trig functions. So when we start doing this and we fig figure out angles in different quadrants, what we're going to do is we're going to know that in quadrant 2, your cosine is negative and your sine is positive. In quadrant 3, both cosine and sine are negative. In quadrant 1, they're both positive. And then in quadrant 2, the cosine is positive and the sine is negative. Now, we'll actually have to figure out tangent. Tangent will be positive in quadrant 1 and quadrant 3 because a positive divided by positive is positive. Negative divided by negative is also positive. In quadrant 2, tangent is going to be negative because a nice little positive divided by negative will give us um, a negative, and a negative divided by a positive is also a negative. So kind of keep that in mind, and we'll look at some other values here in just a second.